Hi all, I want to welcome you back to uh, today's class. Um, today we'll be talking about the Lewis structure and the molecular shape. You see, this is uh, still a continuation of our module four. In module four, we'll be looking at um, ionic compounds. We've looked at uh, covalent compounds. This will be a follow-up on the molecular sh on the shape of uh, Covalent or molecular compounds. So we're going to see both their two D structure and their three D structure as we move on in this class. First things first. Remember, we're going to take our quote. The quote says, "Opportunities are usually disguised as hard work, so most people don't recognize them." I'm not going to say much about this quote, but it is an important point of reflection. What will be our learning objective today? Two important learning objectives. We'll draw the Lewis structure or the 2D of molecules. The 2D of molecules. We'll draw the, the 2D of molecules. We'll call it the Lewis structure of covalent compounds. And then secondly, we use what we call the v, VSEPR. Vis, this means valence shell electron pair repulsion model to predict the shape or the molecular geometry. The molecular geometry means the three dimension, three dimensional, uh, the 3D of molecular covalent compounds. So those are the two most important, uh, the, the two objectives that we're going to be looking at today. All right, we're going to take it off from there. Lewis structure or the 2D of molecules. You see, the Lewis structure or the 2D of molecule represents the chemical structure of a covalent or molecular compound. In fact, in this case, what we're basically looking at is the arrangement of atoms in this compound, the arrangement of both atoms and electrons, or we can say bonds, because bonds are electrons. Bonds, every, any bond formed, like we, we saw when we did uh, nomenclature of covalent compounds, that any time a bond is formed, a bond simply means two electrons. So if we have two bonds, four electrons, three bonds, six electrons. So this is basically what this tells you. It's just a two-dimensional arrangement showing you the arrangement of atoms and the arrangement of bonds around an atom. Now, we do this by drawing what is called the 2D Lewis structure. Now, the most important thing here, remember that for covalent compounds to form, for atoms to generate going to bond it, they want to satisfy the octet rule whether ionic or covalent. In this case, a covalent bond, two atoms will share electrons together to satisfy the octet rule. Remember again, an octet rule simply means an atom wants to have eight electrons at the atomic shell, and that is the only stable form of element when they go into reaction to achieve this octet rule. We've talked about this a lot of times. All right. So there are several steps in drawing this. I'm going to do this quickly. Remember, like I always say in my lectures, I want us to practice and solve more problems. That helps you to understand the class. Now, there are about one, two, three, four, five steps I have here. I'm going to just read this quickly. The first thing we need to do is to we need to determine or calculate the valence electrons in that particular molecule or compound. It can be an ion. It can be just a neutral molecule. And then we want to surround the atom by four pairs of electrons. Four pairs of electrons could be just four bonds, or even four, uh, four lone pairs to achieve the octet rule. And then we have to identify the central atom, which is usually the least electronegative element. And then we surround other atoms around it using those bonds. And then we need to make sure that each of the attached atoms, the peripheral atom, satisfies the octet rule. What that simply means is that if they don't have atoms attached to them, we need to use lone pairs to surround them until they achieve the octet rule. Now, at times, there could be more electrons. What do we do? When the peripheral atoms are satisfied, we now get to the central atoms. And when at times it's not enough, we can remove the lone pairs and begin to create double or triple bonds. Now, the idea here is that every element, every atom needs four lone pairs or eight electrons in its atmosphere. shell. Four lone pairs. Four lone pairs. 
or you can say eight electrons around that most shell. That is the basic idea. So now, what are the useful tips? The useful tips you need to know, this helps you to draw the Lewis structure very quickly. Hydrogen can never be a central atom. Hydrogen just needs a single bond, which is two electrons. It can never be. It can never be a central atom. Anytime you see carbon, I tell my students, Mr. Carbon is the, always the chairman. Carbon is always the central atom. Anytime you see it with anything. So you can have this at the back of your mind. It's easy to figure that out. Carbon is always a central atom. The, another t important thing we need to know is that assuming you saw a couple of atoms you didn't know, if you're going to write exams, in this exam, I usually include the electronegativity table. Now, the least electronegative atom is usually the central atom. That is usually the rule. The atom that is least electronegative. Or you can say the atom that is at most to the left in the periodic table will be the least electron, and it is usually constitute the central atom. And then again, remember that you atoms must bond to satisfy the octet rule. We cannot negotiate that. The octet rule must be satisfied because that is the reason why atoms are going into bonding in the first place. The first thing we do here is we we'll try to practice on how to determine the valence electrons of atom. Okay, the first thing we need to do. Now, I have my small periodic table here as usual. If you can see this, this is quite clear. This is group one. This is group two. Group three. Four, five, six, seven, and eight. So with this now, that will, that will help us remember to determine the valence electron of an atom. It corresponds to the group number. I've told you the American system uses the Roman numeral number, which corresponds to the valence electron of that atom. So let's start here. For this compound, this is actually called methane, or you can call it carbon tetrahydride. Carbon is in group four. It has four electrons. You're actually supposed to know how to do this. And in trying, if you're listening to this class, if you're watching this video, I would advise you to always keep your periodic table by your side. So carbon, here, carbon is in group four. It has four electrons in that moisture. We're going to put it. We're going to add plus. We have hydrogen. Hydrogen is in group one. But we have four atoms. So what do you do? We're going to take, there are four atoms of hydrogen. We'll multiply it by, it's in group one, one electron times one. And what that means, if you add 4 times 1 is 4, 4 plus 4 gives us what? 8 valence electron in this molecule. That is how we do that. Let's do the second one. For hydrogen, for this is water. Or we can say the hydrogen monoxide, according to the name. Here, hydrogen again is in group 1, and there are 2 atoms. So we say 2 times 1 plus oxygen is in group 6. If you look at group 6 here, each of these groups have 6 electrons plus 6. 2 times 1, 2 plus 6 gives you how many? Gives you 8 valence electrons. Again, we go to this one. We go to this is sulfate ion. This is a peculiar case. Remember, we said if you see a negative ion, what it means that atom has gained. So you are adding that number of electrons that corresponds to the charge it had. So there are there is two negative charges. What it means is that we're going to add everything together and also add extra two to it. So let's start. Sulfur is in group 6. Look at it here. 6. So we're going to say 6 plus. There's one atom of sulfur. Oxygen is also in group 6. However, there are 4 atoms. So we're going to say 4 atoms we have here times 6. But we're not done. These 2 minus, what it is, it shows us that this atom is getting, or this entity is getting extra 2 electrons. And when we add all these things, if 4 times 6 is 24, 24 plus 6 is 30. 30 plus 2 gives you 32 valence electrons. That is the number of valence electrons you have in this atom. So for this next page, I will advise you to pause this video, practice this on your own, and then come back to check the answers for comprehension and better understanding. Okay. For PO4, 3 minus. Again, if you look at that table, uh, I just showed this only in this page. I believe you're watching this video, you have your periodic table, you can always use that or always make reference to this. Um, so at a point, it's good for you to try to memorize this things yourself. It helps you to work faster in your exam. Phosphorus is in group 5, so there are 5 electrons in the atmosphere shell plus. Oxygen is in group 6, we tried that already in the previous page, if you look at it. It's in group 6, we used it here. So, and how many electrons, do? how many atoms do we have? We have 4. So we say 4 times 6. And now, there are three minus. What that simply means is that it is getting three electrons. And when you add everything together again, 
it's going to give you 32 valence electrons. We go to ammonia. Ammonium ion. Ammonium ion nitrogen is in group 5. One atom plus hydrogen is in group 1. But there are four atoms. So it will be 4 times 1. What does plus mean? Plus means is that it is losing an electron. So what are, this is plus 1. So we're simply going to say minus 1. So 4 times 1 is 4. 4 plus 5 is 9. 9 minus 1 will give us 8 valence electrons. And then we go to this one. Now for this one, again, carbon here, we see carbon. Carbon is in group 4, and there are 4 atoms, plus hydrogen is in group 1, and there are 2 atoms. So say 2 times 1 electron, plus oxygen in group 6, so add 6. So 2 times 1 is 2. 2 plus 4 is 6. 6 plus 6 will give us 12 valence electron is all we have here. So like I said, all of you to always pause this video and come back to do that. Now, let's, have you known how to calculate the valence electron in a molecule? Now, let us try to draw the two-dimensional structure, the Lewis structure. What do we do? Remember the protocol. The first thing, we have to calculate the valence electron. So to calculate that, the first thing we do here, oxygen is in group C. This is just a single mole a molecule. A, a mon a, this is a monatomic molecule. Sorry, a di atomic molecule, oxygen, O2. So this will be Oxygen is in group C, is two atoms, so it's going to simply be 2 times 6. And this is going to give us 12 valence electrons. Or I want to write this towards this side. Okay, I'm going to try to write this towards this side. So I want to write it here to be 2, so that I'll have some space. 2 times 6 will give me 12 valence electrons. So now, there are just two atoms here, so... We don't need to worry ourselves about which is going to be the central atom. What do you do in this case? Just choose one of them to be your central atom and begin to allocate. We have two electrons to distribute to allocate. Now, we're going to put oxygen. Use just one single connect. So, you know, it doesn't matter. There are just two of the middle one can be. So I'm going to choose this one as my central atom. What that means is that I'm going to first of all satisfy the octet through for this one. So for this one has just two electrons here. One bond means two electrons. Remember? One bond, two electrons. Two bond. Okay, wait, let me make this clearer. Let's know these tips. If you have two bonds, two bonds, let's close. Two bond means four electrons. And then three, three bonds means six electrons. So it's important to you, you know, this kind of thought. It might help you at some point, you know, when we're doing this lecture. So now, if this is my central atom, this is now my central atom. I'm going to now begin to satisfy. So this now is my central atom. So I'm going to satisfy the octet through here. So I'm going to do, so it already has two here. I'm going to put, now, because lone pairs are at times very difficult to draw. I, you can draw lone pair either as a dot. Let me just show this by the side. You can draw lone pair either as your two dots, or you can use one dash to, to present it. It doesn't matter. Anyone can be. So long pair this or one dash. So for now, I'm going to be using just dash because this is an electronic writing. So let's start. So I have, I, have, I have 12 electrons. I've only used what? Two electrons, remaining 10. So I'm going to give this one. So I'm going to say two, four, 6 plus this 8. This one is satisfied. So I've used 8 electrons. How many am I left? 4. So I'm going to say 8, 10, no, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and 12. Now, if you look at this, I've used all the electrons I have here, which is 12. But I'm still not done. What I mean, Remember, the basic rule is that the last rule, each atom must satisfy the octet rule. So if you count the number of electrons around this guy, it is 2, 4, 6, 8. What about this one? 2, 4, 6, not satisfied. So what am I going to do? Just to be fair, I can take away something and put something. That's usually how this is done. So instead of adding and giving it 14, 14 which I don't have, that becomes an error. I'm going to try to take away one from this one and give it to this one. So look at what I'm going to do. I'm going to go, usually this is a trial and error method. I'm going to take my eraser. 
take my light eraser, go here, and take away this bond. Look at the bond I'm going to take away. I'm going to take away one of these bonds and share it in between these two. So I'm going to share it in between them. Now they have two bonds. Let me count. If you count the number of octet through here, now this is two. Now this is two, four. Wait, I just, I think I need to use it less. Okay. Now if you count it, this is two, four, Six, eight. A bit, a bit, a bit. This is even too much more than I thought. So which one is okay? Okay, let me use this one. So this is the one that moves it. I guess I should be using this one. Okay. Oh my God, this actually moves it. Okay. All right. I think I'm gonna use my usual. The laser pointer seems to be too big. Yes, but I'm gonna use it. So this means this is now two, four, six, eight. 10, 12. There are 12 electrons used here. Now, each of them, how many did they get? So, this gets 2, 4, 6, 8. This gets 2, 4, 6, 8. Therefore, this is the correct Lewis structure of this molecule. Why? Because you've used your 12 electrons and all of them are satisfied. So, that is why the true structure of oxygen is drawn and oxygen usually have two bonds. Now, let's go to the next one. Here's here. Again, remember the rule. Carbon is always the central atom. But first, let's calculate the what? The valence electron. The valence electron, hydrogen is in group 1, remember? To be 1 plus. Carbon is in group 4, 1 atom plus 4 plus. Nitrogen is in group 5, 1 atom 5. If you add all of them, they will give you 10 valence electron. Again, there is carbon here. Make it easy on, on yourself. It is the least electronegative here. Not technical, since hydrogen cannot be a central atom. So between carbon and nitrogen, it is the least carbon is the least energy. But make it easy for yourself. Carbon is always the central atom. So I'm going to put my hydrogen to this point, connect it to one bond, to carbon, connect it to this. Simple. Hydrogen is satisfied. It just takes one bond. You cannot put a lump or anything around the hydrogen. That is wrong. You cannot do that. So this is done. The two things I need to worry with is my nitrogen and my and my carbon. However, I have to satisfy the atoms that are attached. Remember, the two atoms attached here are, let me use a different color. The two atoms attached here is this and this. Those are the two atoms I have attached at this point. So what it means, I'm going to satisfy the atoms attached, the peripheral atoms first. In doing that, I'll come back to this. I'm going to attach, try to satisfy this to make, to make it eight electrons in the atomous shell. So let's start for nitrogen. So I'm going to I have 10 electrons. I've used 2, 4. So I have 6 to go. So I'm going to put... Oh no, I'm going to go back to red. Okay, so I'm going to say... This is 2, 4, 6, 8. It is satisfied. Nitrogen is satisfied. It has 8 electrons around it. But so let's count the total. We have, we have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Interesting. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. We have 10 electrons already. Nitrogen is satisfied, but carbon is not. This is an unfair arrangement. So what are we going to do? I'm going to try to be fair enough. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to try to remove, I'm going to remove one bond here and try to share between the two of them. I'll go back. If I share between these two, now carbon has two, four, six. This has two, four, six, eight. Nitrogen. But stay, carbon is not satisfied. What do I do again? I'm going to be fair again. I'm going to take away one more. I'm going to take away this one again. I'll take my this thing again. I'm going to take away this bond and share it between the two of them again. If I share it in between the two of them again, now carbon has two, four, six, eight electrons around it. Nitrogen has two, four, six, eight. And now this is the Lewis structure of hydrogen cyanide. We'll go to the next one. You can pause the video, practice these problems, and always come back to it as usual. Let's draw the look. Again, we we'll calculate the number of valence electrons. Nitrogen is in group 5. It will have 5 electrons plus. Bromine is in group 7. It will have 7 electrons. But how many atoms? 3 times 7. So what would that be? 3 times 7 is 21. 21 plus 5 will give us 26 valence electrons. Again, if you look at this molecule again, 
that makes it easier for you. You look at nitrogen and bromine. You it is take whenever you see one single atom and two or three ones, you feel that others are arranged around it. So what's that gonna be? So it's gonna be. We'll try to draw. We'll put I'll put a nitrogen here, and then let me give myself some space. Here. I'm gonna put a nitrogen, and then I'm gonna put my bromine around it. So just imagine you have three things attached like a triangle. For now, I'm gonna do that. We have my bromine here. I'm gonna have bromine, and I'm gonna have bromine. Three things attached. Now, I have 26 electrons. How many have I used in this distribution? In single, single permits, I've used six. So I have 20 to go. But first, I have to satisfy the guys that are at the outside. So let me start. Here, bromine we need. This makes it a 2, 4, 6, 8. This one, we need that as well. 8. This one, we need that. So let's count. We have 2, 4, we have 8, 8, and so 8 times 3 is 24. And we still have one to go. What are you going to do? You cannot give them more than eight. Now, look at the center. Nitrogen has two, four, six. It's not even satisfying. You have one to go. Just give it to hydrogen. Give it to nitrogen. So if I put it here, and now nitrogen is satisfied. So you find out this is easier. Everything is satisfied. And now this is the true Lewis structure of this molecule. Now, we go to the next one. Always can always pause the video, practice this problem, and come back. For this one, ammonium ion. What are we going to do? Let's do it. Again, nitrogen is in group 5. It's 5 plus. Hydrogen is in group 4. Sorry, hydrogen is in group 1 and 4 atoms. So it's going to be 4 times 1. So now there is plus here. Remember, that means we are subtracting 1. So 4 times 1 is 4. 4 plus 5 is 9. 9 minus 1 will give us 8 valence electrons. Now this is an ion. We're going to see how to draw those. So the first thing I do is I have my nitrogen as a central atom. Remember, hydrogen will never be the central atom. Hydrogen will never be it's nitrogen. Surrounded by four atoms. So we have eight electrons. How many have we used? We've used two, four, six, eight. Oh, it's already finished. We don't have anything to do for that. So what do we now do? Now, remember, this one is charged. You need to indicate that charge with a square bracket and put the charge as a subscript. This is very, very important when you see atoms with charge. The next one. This is hydrogen peroxide. Or the hydrogen <coughs> dioxide, excuse me. Again, let's calculate. Hydrogen is in group 1, and there are two atoms, 2 times 1, plus oxygen is in group 6, and there are two atoms, so we're going to say 2 times 6. So this 2 times 6 is 12. 12 plus 2 gives us 14 valence electrons. So what do we do? You try to distribute initially. Remember, hydrogen will never be at a central atom. So what this tells us is that oxygen is going to be, but this time we have two oxygen that's going to be at the center. Students usually get confused about this at times. But it's usually a trial and error practice until you get it, you master how this is actually done and get used to most of these so this is now we have 14 electrons we've used two four six but we cannot give anything to hydrogen and now we have two central oxygen so choose anyone so i'm going to choose this one as the center now i'm going to first of all satisfy this one so this has two four six eight this is satisfied but let's count how many total what do we have in total now so we have two four six eight ten we still have two to go so two long pairs to go four electrons. So what do I do? And I come to the central atom, which is coincidentally not satisfied. So what that means is that I'm going to add one here and add one here. And when we count everything together, it gives us 14 electrons. Let's count. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. And this is the Lewis structure of hydrogen peroxide. Now let's do the next one, D. Oxygen again is in group 6. Remember that? So I'm going to say, and only one atom, so it's 6 plus fluorine is in group 7 and there are 2 atoms, so it will be 2 times 7 2 times 7 gives you 14, 14 pluses gives you 20 valence electron in this kind of case it's easy for you to figure out that oxygen is what? at the center and actually fluorine is more electronegative so we're going to connect 
the two, the two fluorines around. We've used two, elect two four electrons, and we still have a lot to go. Look at that. We have a lot to go. However, this is the central atom. We have to satisfy these guys. The guys at the center need to be fed. Let's feed them. Two, four, six. We fed fluorine. Two, four, six. So we've used two, four, six, eight. Two, four, six, eight. And we still have what? That's 16. We still have four electrons to go. Coincidentally, oxygen is not satisfied. So the two lone pairs of the four electrons will go on this guy and on this guy. And now oxygen is satisfied. And this becomes the correct Lewis structure of this molecule. We go to the next one. Like I told you, my the way of my lecture is solve more problems and for students to understand it. And that the more we practice, the better you get. So you draw the Lewis structure now. This kind of molecule can be a little bit challenging. This is an organic, actually this is methanol. It's an organic molecule. This is methanol. So let's see how this kind of thing is done. When you get to the part two of this class, you're going to be dealing with organic compounds. So it's easy. It's, it's better you start, we start getting the introduction. So let's count. Carbon is four plus hydrogen. Has how many atoms? Four. This is three plus one, four. So it's going to be four times one plus Oxygen is what? Six. So this is four plus, four times one is four, four plus four, eight. Eight plus six is 14 valence electrons. So what do we do? Carbon is always at the center, remember. Whenever you see it with others, it's always at the center. In this kind of molecule, you can see, you can see more than one central carbon. But in this case, it doesn't matter much. Let's see. So here, it's going to be, we'll put our carbon here. Put hydrogen. Remember, hydrogen, one bond is okay with it. And then, if you say, if you put hydrogen, if you put hydrogen now, you don't have any place you can put your oxygen. And you cannot have four, four bonds, five bonds coming out from this. So we're going to put oxygen here. The way I just wrote this, and then this is actually called the OH group. And then you put another hydrogen here. This is the only way you can draw this. We have 14 electrons. How many have we used? Let's count. Two, four, six. 8, 10. Now, if you look at this, carbon is already has four bonds, which, which is equivalent to eight electrons is satisfied. The only thing not satisfied there is oxygen because this is two, four. But we have two more lone pairs to go. What do we do? We now place it on oxygen, and this is called, this becomes the Lewis structure of this molecule. This is actually called methanol. This one is called acetic acid or ethanoic acid, but we don't need those names. Let's just count the number of valence electrons. There are two carbons here, so we say two times 4 carbon, or 4 times 21 can come first. Hydrogen is 4. We're going to say 4 times 1, because 1 is the valence electron of hydrogen. And oxygen is 2. 2 of them. We say 2 times 6. Remember, oxygen is not group 6. It has 6 electrons at the valence shell. Excuse me. And then, we now add So if you add everything together, it's going to be 24 valence electrons. So if we have this, what do we do next? We now begin to allocate our, remember, our job here is really to allocate electrons. At this student, my student, if you are, if you are drawing Lewis structure, you are a banker, more or less. So you are allocating electrons. Let's do it. So it's going to be C now so this carbon the first carbon has all the groups remember because you have two carbons we're going to put this try to put these carbons at the center so we're going to try to put it at the center and each of the carbon wants four electrons particularly in this organic compound carbon wants four bonds around itself so we're going to now put this Again, you see, it looks like what we have in this one. So if you do everything together, let's count and see if we're satisfied. We have 24. So this is 2, 4, 6, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. Are we good? Let's count again. 2, 
2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Oh, something is missing. You see that? You see an error. I just saw my error now. I just met. There's another oxygen here. So I didn't even account for it. So, because I have another oxygen, what am I going to do? Now, I have excess hydrogen there. It's good I picked up that. So, try to clean this very well. So, what are we going to do? Now, I have an oxygen here. So, I have another oxygen here. So, I'm going to put one here. I'm going to put one here and connect my hydrogen there. Because if I connect, if I connect it any other place, it's not going to work out. Because I have four hydrogen. If I connect it here now, that could be fine. But it's still going to lead me to some other thing. I just want to show you how this is drawn. So, we now have one, two, three, four hydrogen. Now, if you can't, let's see how much we have. This is two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. If you look at this, carbon is pretty satisfied except this one. But we can satisfy this one here. If you satisfy this, this will now have two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen. We still we still away six. So what we're gonna do if you satisfy this one, carbon is not satisfied. And we have it complete. Let's see. So this is two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty two, twenty four. But carbon is not satisfied. So we can have this. What do we do? This carbon, we can make some adjustment with this carbon. What do we do? I'm gonna take off this one and try to introduce a double if I introduce a double bond between this. Carbon is not satisfied, and this is the Lewis structure of acetic. Actually, this molecule is actually called acetic acid. Now, you are not going to be seeing most of these ones in exam, particularly at the level of this class. But it's important you begin to understand how this organic molecule work because how we draw the Lewis structure. This is what you're going to do in the part two of this class. Let's talk about the next thing important in Lewis structures, what we call resonance. Resonance simply tells you that it is possible for an atom to have more than one Lewis structure. And it is still correct. You know, the ones we've been drawing, we've not encountered anyone with two Lewis structure. That concept is called resonance, whereby an atom will have two Lewis structure. So let's take an example to figure that out. This is the nitrate ion. Let's calculate the valence electron. Nitrogen is in group five, five electrons, plus oxygen is in group six, remember. But we have how many atoms? We have three. Three times six. Negative means we're adding one. So if we add three times six is 18. 18 plus one is 19. 19 plus five will give us 24 valence electron. That's what we have here. Now, in this case, nitrogen is what? The central atom. So we're going to draw the central nitrogen. Let's do it. Let me put it here. And then I'm going to surround it with oxygen. Remember, we're going to surround it with oxygen again. And then we begin to allocate our... We've used just six, so let's allocate. If you satisfy this one, satisfy this one, and satisfy this one. So this is two, four, six, eight. This is eight times three, 24. Well, that seems to be correct. We've run out of... We don't have anything left here. But nitrogen is not satisfied. What do I do? I'm going to just remove one from anywhere. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to remove this one here. I'm going to remove this. And then I'm going to share this electron with nitrogen. Now nitrogen is satisfied. And this is the correct Lewis structure for this. So remember again, this is a molecule. You're going to put this. Now, even if it is not a molecule, in Lewis structures, you need to do this. Now, this is the correct Lewis structure for this. But interestingly, that is the only one that will not take, that will that is not the only Lewis structure that is possible for this compound. Why? Let's see. I can take this any of this double bond and put it here, and also move it to this place. So I want to move this from here to this point. Let's see what that gives me. So if I move it to this point, I want to just have a square bracket first. So I'm going to have a nitrogen here. I'm going to have O here. No, remember I want to move it to up. So I'm going to have. I'm going to try to get this out of this. So I'm going to move this. I'm going to remove this. If I move this double bond, so the possibility of this is because this double bond can move around. 
So if you move to this guy now, what it means, I'm going to bring this one back to this one. So I'm going to have this. And then this one also will remain as it is. Now, this is another resonance for this molecule. But like I said, the resonance structure is taken to be the average. Let me underline that. The average of all the resonance structures. Because what is actually happening here is that electrons are actually moving. This actually represents electron moving in between this bone. So I'm going to have another one. Can I have another? The third one. Try to make my space to be okay. So again, I'm going to have nitrogen here. So what it means is that I'm not going to have a single bone here. I'm going to have a single bone here. And then I'm going to move the double bone here. And this is actually another Lewis structure. So you find that this molecule has three equivalent Lewis structures, which are taken actually to be one, an average of all of them. And that is exactly what's going to happen in the next one. Let's look at it. Selenium is in group six, six electrons. We're going to add plus. Oxygen is also in group six. And there are three atoms, three times six. If you add everything together, if you say three times six is 18, 18 plus six will still give you 24 valence electrons. So again, we start selenium. We now try to put oxygen around it. Now, we have used six. If you try to satisfy this guy, all, you find out that this is now 8, 8, 8, 24. But you still have balance. This is not satisfy. What do you do? I'm going to take away one. So I'm going to start from, like I did before, from this one. I'll just take away this one. So I'm going to take away this one. I'm going to add a double bond. If you add a double bond here, this is the Lewis structure. Now, let me give you this. Every, whenever a compound has a resonance, you have to put this square bracket, whether it is has an ion or not. You have to put this square bracket and use this arrow to show them, this equivalent arrow, the two double, or the two double-edged arrow. You have to always show that. So again, I'm going to now move this around like I did in this one. So I'm going to move this to this. Again, I'm going to have selenium. We now have a double bond here. I'm going to move this. I'm going to just, this one will be, this one will also be. And then I'm going to have this. Why did I put, I don't know why I did that. I think there is no charge here. You're not supposed to put charge. Now, you use a square bracket for this, whether it has a charge or not. That is the rule in drawing the Lewis structure for molecules that exhibit resonance. Again, the last one, I'm not going to move this to this side. So again, I have my selenium here. Now, this is going to be single. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> this is going to be single. And the double bond is going to be here. And again, I'm going to have this. <coughs> this becomes the last one. Excuse me, I'm going to get a water to drink. The air around here seems to be a little bit dry in Yakuma, you know, recently. All right, so this is how you can do it. So I will advise you to pause to try the next one on the next page. The next one we have on the next page is similar to what we've just done. It's just for you to pause the video, try it yourself again. Both of them have to. So again, if you add everything here, 4 plus, oxygen is 6, and it has 3, 3 times 6. And then remember, this is negative 2. Simply means we're going to add a strat. If you add everything together, it's going to give you 24 valence electrons. And carbon, like we said, is always at the center, right? So I'm going to try to put <coughs> my square bracket earlier so that it's going to help me to conserve the space. <clears throat> so carbon will be at the center. I'm going to satisfy carbon with add it to the oxygens. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, what do I do? I now try to, I have 24 electrons. If you, again, if I satisfy, like the ones we did before was 24. If I give it, this is 8, this 8, this 8. It becomes 24 and this will be satisfied. So eventually it's going to look like the other one. So, so it's exactly like the one we did. Why I put this thing is just for you to practice it. Just for your practice. Exactly like the two we did before. So I'm going to move these double bonds. 
So I'm going to move this double bond and see. This will now be a single bond. It, this will now be a double bond. This is also a single bond. And the last one, you're going to move it again. So you started here, moved here. I'm going to move it to the one to the right. So it's going to be common. This one will be single this time. This one will be single. And then I'm going to give it to this guy. This one will be this. And then you still put your two minus. So this is the three Lewis structures for this. Because it has, if it has three atoms, that tells you it's going to have three Lewis structures. Now look at this one. This one is different. This one has two. Two atoms. So the possibility of it will only be two. So let's see. So this nitrogen is in group five plus... Oxygen is in group six, but there are two atoms. So it's two times six. Negative one means plus one. If you add all these things together, this is two times six is twelve. Twelve plus five is seventeen. Seventeen plus one is eighteen valence electron. Again, these two nitrogen, of course, will tell you will be at the center. So let's put nitrogen at the center here. We add it to oxygen on both sides. Then we have eighteen electrons we've used two. So let's try to satisfy this. Now satisfy this. So this is 8, right? Yeah, we have eight, 18 electrons. So let's see what we have. So we have 8, 2, 4, 6, 8, 2, 4, 6, 8. That's 16. So 16 remaining 1, 18. Yeah, we have 18 electrons. But if you look at this, nitrogen is not satisfied. It's still missing two electrons, one lump pair or one dash, whichever way you want to write it. So this can be called, what do we do? We can remove one electron and share. So what am I going to do? I'm going to remove this electron at this point. I'm going to remove this one. And then I'm going to add the double one between this one. So this will be, this is the correct Lewis structure of this nitride ion. This is the first Lewis. However, I can move this double bond between these two. Look at this double bond can move this. So if you move to the second one, I'm going to just have O here. Uh -huh, my O. If I move it this way, the double bond will go this way. I'm going to only have two lone pairs. And this one is not going to have the three lone pairs around it. And again, I put my square bracket. So this is the Lewis structure for this molecule. Like I said, you can always pause the video, come back and watch it again. And then practice all the questions. So now we're going to be moving to the next thing, which will be the last part of this lecture. What we call the molecular geometry or the 3D of molecules. See what we've just been talking about in the Lewis structure is just the two-dimensional. We're not given any chance of saying how does this look in actually in the three-dimensional space because we use 2D to understand 3D and we live in a three-dimensional world. So we use a theory, a theory called the Vesper model. The Vesper model simply means valence share electron pair repulsion theory. Now, it is based on the fact that mutual repulsion of electron pairs is what determines the actual shape of molecule. So, what is that telling us is that, okay, assuming I have an, a central atom X and I have a bond attached to, let's say, A and attached to A. Now, if there are no lone pairs on this atom, this will be the shape of this atom. No lone pairs. This is the shape, like a linear. What if I have a, a, a lone pair on it? Okay, if I have a lone pair on it here, remember, a lone pair simply means two electrons again. What that simply means is that this electron, let me use a different color, has the ability to push these bonds away from itself. Remember this, like times repair. This is an electron. This is an electron. When they come close, they're going to push. So it pushes it out, and that power it uses in pushing it out will make this bond to change and become something like this. Look, let me draw it a different color now. So it will bend it. Let's see how much it's going to bend it. Because Lompe has a lot of power to bend something. It's going to bend this molecule to a new shape. Where, and this will actually be how this molecule will, ex, will occur in the real three dimension. So what is simply telling us is that electrons will always push away each other. And that maximum push will determine what the final structure of the molecule will look like in the two in the three dimensional world. So what that simply means is that you have to figure out which one is the central atom. So any central atom, any central atom is any atom or molecule 
that is bonded to two or more atoms. It has to be two or more atoms. And if we apply this theory, we can easily predict just the actual shape of molecule, what the shape of molecule looks like in real nature. So we don't have to use X-ray crystallography to look at the shape of this molecule. We just use this theoretical model to predict the actual shape of molecules. Now, how do, what are the important tips we need to know about this is that all valence electron pairs around the central atoms are counted equally. What it means is that an atom, whether you have double or two or triple bond, they are counted as one. So assuming I have something like this now, in Vesper model, if you have this, to A, and I have X to A, the shape of this molecule is the same thing. Why? Because in this molecule, there are two things attached, two A's attached. Here, there are two A's. So now I'm counting this bond as one. It doesn't matter whether it is triple or double bond. You just count the number of attachments. Don't count the number of bonds. That is no that doesn't matter because this is the three dimension. Again, the double or the triple or triple bond are treated like I said, they are treated like a single pair of electrons when predicting these shapes. Now, the most important thing now, the electron pair geometry, or what we call the, the electron pair geometry, the EPG name, I call it the two dimensional name, will only differ from the three D's name, molecular geometry name, if there is what? A lump pair. Remember this thing I showed you here? If there's a lump pair. Remember what I showed you? I showed you this. It is only when there's a lump pair that the shape changes and the name changes. If there's no lump pair, it remains the same. We're going to apply this. So this my flow chart helps you to figure out that. If I give you a molecule and say predict the shape, the first thing you do, you draw the Lewis structure, which is the 2D. You move from the 2D and say what is the electron geometry name or electron pair geometry. You can call it electron pair geometry. It doesn't matter. You say what is the EPG. So electron pair geometry, EPG or EG. It doesn't matter. And from the electron pair geometry name, you can tell what is the molecular geometry or the molecular structure, which we call the molecular geometry name. So this is the sequence. You draw the 2D, you say what the EPG is, and from there you say what is the molecular geometry. And there is a table that explains this. Now, there are four, dif three different electron arrangements at the level of this class. Three possible electron arrangements you can see. When there are two, if you have a central atom, and there are two things attached to it, so assuming I have a central atom, let me put it this way, okay, I didn't show my central atom here. Assuming I have a central atom at this point. Good. And I have two stuff attached to it. I have this and this. It's a linear molecule. That is the electron geometry or electron pair geometry name. That's the first one. If I have, okay, assuming this is my central atom now here. And I, ha I have three things attached to it that makes it look like a triangle. It is a trigonal planar. And if I have another mole, if I have four atoms attached to something, now this is like a 3D, where you have four things, okay, I'm going to put this one this way. You have, let's say, X, 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 and X. Now, you are assuming that one of these guys goes backward. This one is the one that is pointing away from you and pointing into the board. So anything that has four attachments is a three-dimensional. So actually, we try to draw it this way. Let me show you. Now, the one, if this, this is the one that goes up, which is this one I have here. Let me put it. So let me use another color to show my central atom. Let me just use this red to show my central atom. Now, the one that is going away from me, going to the back, is, I'm not seeing it because this is three-dimensional. I use what is called the, the dash line to represent that. So I'm going to use the dash line to show. This is going into the board or going away from you, or you can see going into your book. And then the one you can see coming close to you is shown with a strong thick line. And the one you can see to your right goes this way. So we actually call this the thick wedge. This is the dash line. So the dash is something that is going away from you. The thick wedge is coming towards you. And these two are the ones you can see at your plane in the plane of your eye. So that is what we represent in tetrahedra. So when anything has that four attachment, it's going to have that three-dimensional shape. Of course, both 
a linear a line and triangle are plan mo planar molecule. But the tetrahedral structure is actually what? Is a three-dimensional molecule. So the most important, you need to memorize this table. This is called the Vesper model table. The table tells you, oh, sorry, my bad, tells you what you need to know about uh, about uh, all the things I've been talking about. Now, let's look at it. The first tells you the number of atoms. Here gives you the number of lumps. In fact, in the, I made up this table. In fact, here, I have to use two dots as my lump for you to understand it. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me again. I have to get some more water here. And now the next one, the column is electron geometry name that you need to memorize. So you can say electron pair geometry. You can say the EPG. It doesn't matter. I think I should go back to my red color. And then this is the molecular geometry MG name. Which and I showed you the two dimension now the bond angle they have in them and everything. So let's start when there are around the central atom. When there are two things attached to it, look at what it looks like. So the central atom here is A, and the peripheral atom is X. So this is A attached to two things. It is a linear molecule. The molecular the electron pair geometry is linear. No, you look at this now. There is no lone pair. So the name the, this and this is equal. There's no lone pair, and the bond angle is 180 degrees. If you look at this, three things are attached to this. The name is trigonal planar. There's no lump pair. Therefore, the tri it will be the same thing. The both names will be the same thing. And the bond angle is 120. And this is a good example. When there are four attachments, four atoms or four lump pairs attached. So remember, no, there's no lump pair, just four atoms attached. You have this. It is tetrahedral, tetrahedral, remember? There's nothing just like this, the first ones I show. Now, when a lump pair is introduced, it begins to, it begins to change. Look at this. In this one, has two atoms and one lump pair. Let's look at it. This is two atoms on both sides and one lump pair. It is trigonal planar because it has three things attached. The two-dimensional name or, or the electron pair is trigonal planar. When there's one lump pair, look at what a lump pair does. It pushes these bonds down. It makes it to be a bent or V-shaped molecule. Here again, if there are four things attached, the, there is a tetrahedral molecule. But there's one lump pair. What does the lump pair do? It pushes this down again. If it pushes it down, it makes this to change to what? Trigonal pyramid. And look at what it looks like here. Again, if you have two atoms and two lump pairs, look at what you have. Two lump pairs on both sides. The real nature, the real way to look like is this way. You see this? We push it down. And this again is going to be bent or vicious. So if, if you look at these ones with lump pair, you find out that they are Molecular geometry name is different from the electron pair geometry name, and you need to watch out for this. So if you look at this thing I did here now, these are three schemes of things that work with four attachments. If you look at this, all these three guys have four attachments. Let's look at them. Now, this is four attachment. Carbon attached to four things. Now, if this is clear to you, this is hydrogen. Hydrogen is really in white. This God is the ball and stick model. There is no lump pair. So if when there are four attachments, of course, this is tetrahedral, the electron geometry name. How many attachments do we have here? One, two, three, four. There's three atoms. There is three hydrogen atoms and one lone pair. So this is also tetrahedral. That's okay. That's the electron geometry name. How many do we have here? One, two, three, four. Also tetrahedral. Because there are here there are two atoms and two lone pairs. Now, remember what I told you about this structure. It begins to change. All of them have a total of four attachments. But now, the first one, four attachment, no lone pair, so the name is going to be the same thing. So if I go back here, there's no lone pair, so the name will be the same thing, tetrahedral. If I come here, there's one lone pair. Let's look at it, what it will look like. Let's go back. If you look at this page, there are four total attachments. One of them is a lump pair. So it's tetrahedral for a lump. What is the molecular geometry name? Trigonal pyramid. So this will be a trigonal pyramid because of that lump pair there. Again, let's go back. There are total, total of four attachments, but there are two lump pairs. This is a lump pair. Two lump pairs here. There's two lump pairs and two attachments. Let's go and see. Here, total of four attachments. Two lump pairs. To attachment, it's tetrahedral EPG. The MG is going to be bent or V-shaped. We go back, so this is going to be bent or V-shaped. 
So this actually represents the three dimensional name. This is actually the two dimensional name. So this is how these molecules will look. So we're going to understand this more by the time we begin to draw and solve the problems we have moving forward. So the question says, we're getting close to this lecture. I know it's a long lecture, and this is a very important concept you need to understand if you're going to be successful in the next class of this series. Now let's first of all start our usual way. Carbon has four electrons plus oxygen, six electrons, and the valence shell is in group six. And there are two of them. If you add everything together, it's going to give you 16 valence electrons. So we're going to try to draw the 2D Lewis structure. Let's do. So here, carbon has two attachments. There are two atoms attached to carbon. But we have six electrons. We've only used two. So let's satisfy this. We put this here. Put this 8, 2, 4, 6, 8. 10, 12, 14, 16, oh. it's, we've exhausted our electrons, but something is missing. Carbon is not satisfied. Again, you go back and begin to reappropriate it. I'm going to take away this one and add a double bond. It still needs one more. What am I going to do? I'm still going to go back again, take away this one, and do, do what again, add a double bond. So this becomes the Lewis structure. Now, let's see. What important? Do we have a Lewis structure here? No. What it means is that the EP genome it says we should find the EPG. So the electron page geometry name is going to be, so the electron page geometry EPG is going to be linear. Linear. It doesn't have a long pair, so no need to even redraw it. So, okay, let me redraw it for, the, remember we said in doing this thing, we count every bond as one, so I'm, I'm not going to bother to. And you don't have to put the long pairs on the central, on the peripheral atoms. In drawing the three-dimensional model, you don't have to put the lone pair on the peripheral atom. So I'm not going to put the lone pairs, and I'm going to use count the bond as one. So here, carbon is attached to two things. Now, there's no lone pair, so it's going to remain linear. However, what is the bond angle? What is the bond angle? The bond angle will be 180. So I'm going to say the bond angle will be 180 degrees. And this is all contained in this table, which you need to memorize by practice. Okay, you need to memorize it by part. Let's look at this one. GE. GE is germanium is in group four. So what it means is it's gonna have four electrons. Plus bromine is in group seven, it's gonna have seven electrons. And how many do we have? have? Four of them. So four times seven is twenty-eight. Twenty-eight plus four will give us thirty-two valence electrons. So what do I do? I'm drawing the two D first. So I'm gonna say germanium has four attachment. So I'm gonna say bromine attached here, bromine attached here. Brom now, first I have to satisfy the peripheral atom. So I'm gonna give this guy three long pairs. So let's count. This is eight, 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 eight. Eight, eight times four is 32, we're satisfied. Now, is germanium satisfied? Two, four, six, eight. Germanium is satisfied coincidentally. So we've arrived at what we want. Germany is satisfied, bromine is satisfied. This is the Lewis structure. Now, we don't have a lone pair, so it's easy. The EPG and the MG is going to be the same thing. It's easy for us. So the EPG is going to be, there are four attachments to this germanium central atom, so it's going to be tetrahedral. And then, it's not going to change. The name is not going to change. However, since we have four attachments, this can look like a 3D. So I'm going to draw the 3D. So for the 3D, I'm going to have you don't need to put a long pairs here when you're drawing the 3D. If this one is pointing to the board away from me, I'm going to put it this way. Now, this is the one coming close to me. This is BR. And this is the one that I can see to my right. So this is the three-dimensional structure. And now, if you look at that bond angle, in this case, when there are four attachments, the bond angle is what? 109.5 degrees. And this name is not going to change. It will remain a tetra draw molecule for the molecular geometry. So both the EPG and the MG is the same thing. We go to the next one, where they're a little bit different. Again, let's draw the Lewis structure of ammonia. The Lewis structure for ammonia, we now start again. So it's going to be nitrogen is in group 5 plus oxygen is in group 1, but it has 3 atoms, 3 times 1. This is going to give us equal to 8 valence electrons. Again, I'm going to have nitrogen surrounded by 
three stuff. So I've used two, four, six. Hydrogen cannot get anything. The only remaining one will be added to nitrogen. So this is the Lewis structure of this molecule. So now it's easy. So this is the Lewis structure. So what it means is that, okay, I'm going to try to draw the 2D before I now answer other questions. Now, this can have a three-dimensional structure. When you look at, look, if you look at your Vespa table again, look at that table. If you look at that table now, like ammonia, like this one we drew here, this is exactly the same thing we drew here. There's one lump, it's going to change. So, it's going to be, nitrogen has one lump. This lump is going to change this thing to, now, a bond, okay, no, I'm going to put, I like putting the one up. This bond, like a pyramid, is pointing away from me, this hydrogen. This one is pointing close to me, towards me, and this one is the line I can see. So this is a, a trigonal pyramid. So what it means is that the EPG will be, the EPG is determined by the number of attachments. This is tetrahedral. And then the molecular geometry will be trigonal planar. And then what is the bond angle? Bond angle is determined by the total number of attachment. So the total number of attachment here is 4. So the bond angle is going to give us 109.5 degrees. Again, all this, we got it from this table. You got to look at it. This is it here. This is it. The bond angle is 105. The e molecular geometry name is trigonal and the tetrahedral. And the EPG is tetrahedral. So you need to memorize this table. This will not be given in your exam. Then the next one, let's do this one. Carbon is 4, the valence electron, plus hydrogen is 1. We say 2 times 1. Oxygen is 6 plus 6. If you add everything together, it's going to give you 12 valence electron. If you try to draw this, it's going to look this way. C will be connected to O, connected to hydrogen, and connected to hydrogen. Now, we need to satisfy this one first. So it is now, let's count. This is 12 electrons, so this is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Right? Yeah, that's correct. So this is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, oh, 12. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Yes. It's 12. It's already satisfied. But this is, it, we've used the 12 electron, but carbon is not satisfied. What do we do? We're going to take away one. Remember, this is trial and error. That's the best way to achieve it. You put this here. So this is the Lewis structure of this guy. Again, there's no lump here. What it means, this looks like three attachment, it looks like a triangle. So if we're going to draw the 2D, just going to look this way. C, O, H, 2H. When there are three attachment, it's a triangle. So the EPG name will be a trigonal. Oh, I made a mistake. Trigonal plan. I just see the mistake I made now. The molecular geometry, there's no lump here. It's going to be exactly the same thing. Trigonal, planar, it's not going to change. And then the bond angle, when there are three attachments, the bond angle is going to give us 120 degrees. Again, if you look at the table, let's see. There are three attachments and zero lump here. Look at it. Three attachments, let's see. No, three attachments, trigonal, planar, trigonal, planar, 120 degrees. So this is trigonal pyramid, please. I just saw that now. Sorry for, sorry though, sorry my bad. This is a trigonal pyramid. I just saw that. I was surprised. I just was looking. I don't know how I even saw it. That would have been costly, costly of a mistake. So this trigonal pyramid. That's what we have there. So moving on again to the next problem. Now we're gonna see more ones with lump pairs. Let's see. Draw the Lewis structure of the, again the same question. It's just different molecules. Oxygen is in group six. I'm gonna have six plus fluorine is in group seven. I'm gonna have what? Two times seven. If two times seven is fourteen, fourteen plus six will give you twenty valence electron. Again, oxygen should be the central atom. So I'm gonna say O. I'm gonna put F on both sides. I should give myself some space there. That's too close to this. So I'm going to give myself, okay. F and F. And then I want to satisfy this and satisfy this. 
So if I try this is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. I still have two more long pairs to go. So I'm going to put it here, 16, 18, 20. This is the Lewis structure. Now, this thing has, the central atom has two things attached to it and two long pairs. So total of attachment we have here is four. So this is four things attached to it. The EPG name is going to be tetrahedral. So, but we're going to get to that. Let me draw. So now, it's going to change this molecule because there are two long pairs. It's going to bend. If you look at that scheme again, When there are two atoms attached and two long pairs, it is tetrahedral total, but it becomes bent. So it's going to look this way. So I'm going to try to draw that that way. So what is going to look this way? Now it's going to be O. I'm going to make it bent. Remember, you don't need to add the long pairs on this guy. So I'm going to put the, the long pairs on both sides because the long pair is pushing this bond down. And therefore, this is the molecular geometry. So it's going to be the molecular geometry is sorry, the electron pair geometry first. That's usually what I want to write first. Because that's why it, so the EPG is tetrahedral. The molecular geometry will be bent. You're going to look at that scheme and the bond angle will give you, there are four attachments. So the total bond angle, the bond angle is always constant 1.5 109.5 degrees. We get to this one. Now this one again, we count the number of volume. So this is 5. Ox nitrogen is 5 plus oxygen is what? 6. And 2 times 6. We have negative 1. That means we're going to add 1. If you add everything, it gives you 18 valence electrons. Again, we draw our nitrogen. is at the center. Add 2 oxygen. So I'm just going to do, do this straight. We've drawn this before. I'm going to show you what it, this is the one I drew earlier. So I'm going to show you what it looks like directly. This is what the Lewis structure will look like. That means it has two attachments. Nitrogen has two attachments, two oxygen, and one lone pair. So what that simply means is that the, 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 the 3D name is going to change. The molecular geometry is going to change. So what it means, we're going to get, in the real sense, what we're going to have is nitrogen. We have this and this is going to bend the bond so if you look at this again let's go to our table as usual there are total of three attachment no there are total of three attachment and one of them is a long pair so it's going to be a trigonal planar for the epg the mg is going to be bent so we go back there so the epg electron pair geometry name will be trigonal planar and then the molecular geometry name you look at it, it looks bent so this is a bent and then the bond angle is going to be there are three things attached the bond angle will always be 120 degrees we go to the next problem now this is the kind of one i did earlier I remember when i told you and it's, it's easy say use carbon as the central atom so just to save time i'm just going to draw what it looks like the Lewis structure, and that tell you, we now figure out what the EPG, the MG, and the bond angle is. So if you draw this well, remember the one we drew earlier, you can check it out. I drew this earlier. So it's going to be, and if I give you this kind of problems, they have two atoms that can be central. I will always say central atom is carbon. I stated it clearly. So I'm going to draw it. So it's, I'm going to, it's going to look this way. Carbon will be connected to three hydrogen, and then an OH. This is the Lewis structure of this molecule, like we did, we did earlier. However, if I'm going to make the structure around this now, how many things attach this? Okay, let me use a green. How many things? We, have, we will now say this is one attachment, two, three, and four. There are four attachments to this. Therefore, the electron pair geometry name is going to be what? Tetrahedral. And it's not going to change for the other one. It's not going to change. So what is it going to be? So even if I want to redraw the 2D name, Okay, let me redraw the, the, the 3D. So it's going to be C. If I put this one as the one I'm seeing, uh, the one pointing away from me, another hydrogen is pointing away from me, then this one is coming close to me, and then I can see this one. So what that means is that since there are four attachments, we have tetrahedral, EPG, 
the molecular geometry is going to be exactly the same thing because there's no attachment. And the, the bone angle, there are four, four things attached. The bone angle will give us 109.5 degrees. So this is exactly what it's going to give us. And then let's do this one. AS. So this one is new. We're going to draw it. We're going to count the number of arsenic is in group 5. So it's going to be 5 plus iodine. Iodine is in group 7. So it's going to be 3 times 7. So 3 times 7 is 14. 14, 3 times 7 is 21. 21 plus 5 will give me 26 valence electron. So arsenic is going to be at the center. So I'm going to have AS connected to I. I, three I's. I have 26. I've used 6, so I'm going to try to satisfy these guys. So what does that, this leaves me with 8, 2, this is 8, 8, 8, 8 times 3 is 25. They have one more lump pair. I can't add it anywhere than this guy. So it has one lump pair. What it means is that the EPG name is going to be different from the MG name. So if you have this, you have to have memorized it by now so far with practicing. The, the total attachment is 4. So we're going to have how many? Let's, I can just show you the attachment again. That will help. This is 1, 2, 3, and 4. So the EPG name is going to be tetrahedral. And then it's going to be a trigonal pyramid. So I'm going to try to put it, show you here. So it's going to be AS. It's going to have one of this guy pointing away from me. I. Then this one is pointing towards me. And this one I can see easily. And then I put my lump. Remember, you don't need to show the lump pairs of the peripheral atoms. So what does it do? Look at your table again. I'm not going to refer to it. The electron pair geometry tells you for attachment is tetrahedral. The molecular geometry tells you what. What does it look like? It actually, the 3D structure is this guy. This is why this is the 3D. This is how it looks like. Remember, this is the 2D. This is the 3D. So the 3D tells us that it looks like a trigonal pyramid. looks like a trigonal pyramid and then the bond angle since there are two of our attachment the bond angle is always 109.5 degrees and we get back to the last but not the least uh, of these problems BRCN we've not done anything like this so we're gonna try to draw it so let's see BLCN. And again, I want to let you know, I have a full lab dedicated for this. So we're going to practice this in the lab as well. You watch the video over and over and try to practice this. Like I said, you can pause this video, solve these problems, and always come back to check your answer. So again, bromine is in group 7, 7 electrons in the atom shell. Carbon is in group 4, plus nitrogen is in group 5. 7 plus 4 is 11, 11 plus 5 is 16 valence electrons. Again, carbon is always at the center, so we put it there. Carbon will be connected to nitrogen, will be connected to bromine. We have 16 electrons. Let's satisfy these guys. We'll satisfy this one first. Satisfy this one. So let's see. We have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. But carbon is no near from being satisfied. No near from being satisfied. Now, I want to give you a secret. When, particularly when you see this kind of thing, these molecules like bromine, all of them usually don't accept a lot of lump pairs. The guy that accepts the lump pair, that accepts, sorry, triple bond, is usually nitrogen. That's why nitrogen has always have a triple bond around it. So let's see if that works in this case. So I'm going to take off one of these guys and add the lump pair so that they're going to share equitably. Now, carbon is not satisfied again. What am I going to do? I'm going to take away another one. I'm going to take away another one took away another one from here and then share another so you see now carbon has two four six eight is satisfied and everybody's satisfied here so this is the Lewis structure this is the two-dimensional structure now this carbon has how many attachments let me show you how many attachments it has one and two attachments so when it has two, two attachments is linear remember so what we basically do is 
drawing the 3D the 3D structure, we just say carbon. No, I'm gonna make it. so carbon attached to nitrogen. Carbon attached to nitrogen here and attached to bromine. Remember again, you don't need to show the lone pair of the peripheral atoms or the atoms at the end in 3D. So that means this is the 2D, this is the 3D. And there's no lone pair, that's what I mean. So when there's no lone pair, the EPG, of course, no lone pair, the EPG will be linear to attachment. That doesn't look fine. Linear. The MG will be the same thing, will still be linear. And then the bond angle will give us only two attachments, will give you 180 degrees. You need to refer to the table. Now let's do the last, but not the least, sulfur trioxide. Sulfur is in group 6, so 6 plus, oxygen is in group 6, but there are 3 atoms, 3 times 6. 3 times 6 is 18, 18 plus 6 will give me 24 valence electron. Again, what do I do? I put my sulfur here at the center, connected to oxygen. Now, again, this structure looks like the one we did earlier, SeO3 earlier, selenium trioxide. It's going to have a resonance structure. But in doing this, you just choose one of the resonance structure. In trying to figure out the electron pair geometry and molecular geometry name, if it's a molecule that has a resonance structure, just choose one. So what are we going to do? Let's count. If you count, this is 8. 8, 8, eight times 3 is 24, which is satisfied. But... Sulfur is not satisfied. We can do better than this. What can we do? We try to take out, we take away one of these and make sulfur to share with oxygen. And now this is the correct Lewis structure for this. So if you look at this now, there is no lump attached to this. There's no lump attached to it. So that helps us to make it easy because the EPG will be the same. So if you want to draw the 3D, this is of course the 2D. The 3D will be just, remember, just use single bonds for the 3D. The interest is on the central atom, no, no lone pair. So what it means is that the EPG, the electron pair geometry, three attachments tells you there are three things. I told you earlier, it is called trigonal planar. You need to memorize that table. It's part of your responsibility to memorize that table. The molecular geometry, there's no attachment. It doesn't change. So it's going to give us what? The same thing. Trigonal planar. And then the bond angle will be, when there are three attachments, the bond angle will always be 120 degrees. So you need to memorize all this stuff. Now, I'll advise you to always pause this video at intervals, practice this, and come back. I know it's a long video, but by the time we do this in the lab and practice more and more, you're going to get used to this. Once again, we've come to the end of this lecture section once again. Thank you for listening. If you do have questions, you know, the usual channel to contact me. Uh, thank you for listening, and I will see you next time.